Greetings, minions. Auntie Heather here. Uh, I wanted to thank you all so much for all of your wonderful comments, and, and I hope that you keep watching. Of course, unless you don't like what I'm doing here, and then just stop. But uh, <laughs> those of you that do enjoy it, I really, I really dig it, and I like. I feel like we're interacting in a really cool way. Um, I wanted to thank you all for all of your suggestions when it came to video games, actually. I have chosen The Last of Us to be the next game I play, and I'm really excited about it because, hello, apocalypse. It's gonna be, I mean, what's more fun than the apocalypse? <laughs> so, um, actually, uh, today we have story time with Auntie Heather, or story hour with Auntie Heather, or story something. I don't know, you want a story with Auntie Heather and I'm gonna read your story, it's gonna be amazing. So in a moment, I'm going to dim the lights, put jammies on, put curlers in my hair, and we're all gonna gather around and I'm gonna read you a story. And I hope that you enjoy it. For those of you that wanted to talk about writing, I will do an entire vlog on writing. But first you have to leave comments. You know. Com comments. You have, you have to leave comments. And leave comments and tell me exactly, specifically, what it is that you want me to talk about when it comes to writing or publishing. But I'm not going to leave you hanging too much. What I want to do today, I actually want to give you a really great piece of advice. I think it's a great piece of advice, but mostly because I'm giving it. And if you're giving the advice, you generally think it's good, or you wouldn't give it, you know? Anyway, <laughs> the thing is, um, when I started writing, when I started writing with an eye toward publishing, I would look up all these different things about writing, all these different things about publishing. I was looking, I think, for the secret. It seemed like there was a secret to getting published. How do you go from sitting alone and writing a story to having a book on a shelf in a bookstore? And I couldn't believe that, that there was any kind of a, a set formula to it. You know, that A plus B would equal C. It, it just it didn't feel that way. It felt like you had to know someone, or you had to pay someone, or you had to have that secret. You had to know. So I would spend hours and hours googling and reading books about writing and publishing and just pouring myself into it, when what I really should have been doing is the thing that actually got me published. I should have been writing. I know it sounds really flippant. It seems really like it's too easy and you probably won't trust my answer but the answer is if you really want this as a job first off decide why you want it do you want it because you love writing and it's the only thing you can imagine doing for the rest of your life and you want to make a living at it or do you want to be famous because if you want to be famous don't become an author most authors are not famous I think they all should be but but most aren't so if that's your reason, maybe rethink some things. Now, what I mean by uh, what I should have been doing <laughs> at the time, I told you I was looking up how to be a writer and how to, how to get published. And when I sat down and I really threw myself into a story, when I really devoted that time not only to writing, but to editing my story and learning how to write by reading other amazing authors and then applying what I learned to my own works, that's when I started seeing success. If you want to know more about uh, how to become published, I will post a link to a blog I did several years ago. That's about you know how to get published and how to, you know how you need an agent and all this other stuff and everything. So I'll post that you know in somewhere wherever the box thing is or in my blog if you're on my blog or you know wherever. But uh, check that out and keep writing because if you really love it and you have talent and you have determination and you will never ever ever take no for an answer then this can be your job too but make sure that this is the job that you want so anyway without further ado i believe it is time for story time with auntie heather <laughs> Gather round, minions. Auntie Heather has a story to tell you. Welcome to Story Hour with Auntie Heather. Now, first off, we have to make sure you have everything that you need for Story Hour with Auntie Heather. You'll need a snack. Do you have a snack? I do. I have a cookie. I already kind of got started. And of course, I have the required fun dip. Fun dip is my favorite thing 
ever besides my minions. So if you have a snack, good. If you don't have a snack and you're not in your jammies, run now. Go get in your jammies. It's okay. I'll totally wait. Grab a snack and then we'll get started. Ready? Go. Okay, are you ready? Okay, good. Um, choosing a story for today's story hour with Auntie Heather was a bit of a challenge. You see, I like really cool things, and my minions like really cool things. And so narrowing it down was kind of difficult. At first, I was thinking of reading you The Gashley Crumb Tinies by Edward Gorey. If you have not read them, you should. They are amazing. And then I said, well, no, I don't want to do that. But maybe maybe The Ten Little Zombies Love Story by Andy Rash, which is also awesome. And then I said, oh, my God, maybe I could read All My Friends Are Dead, which, of course, is by Avery Munson and Jory John. And it's amazing and hysterical if you ever read it. And then I realized that what I wanted to read for this first story hour with Auntie Heather, we can get to those stories later on if you guys want to continue doing this. But what I wanted to read to you is actually a story that means a lot to me. Uh, this story, actually, this book, this book right here, this is the one we're going to read. Matches my hair, kind of. Uh, this book is actually uh, kind of a mystery to me. You see, I was doing this uh, big event with a bunch of librarians and I think booksellers. I don't know, after a while it blurs together, but it was amazing. And some mysterious person had left a book for me after they had heard my tale and this book really touched me in a way and I wanted to read that with you to share that with you because I think that I think it might mean something to you guys too so you'll have to tell me because it's great I have my gorgeous curlers you wonder how my hair got so awesome now you know no it doesn't not like that anyway this book is called and she sparkled by Joan Stephan. Everybody have your snack? There once was a little girl, and she sparkled. She lived in her magnificence, singing and dancing wherever life took her. In the morning, a finger of sunlight would reach gently through the blinds and tickle her awake, and she would leap from her bed, looking for joy wherever she could find it. And she found it with her toes in the grass, her tiny hands around a dandelion, her hair tangled from the possibilities for fun that swirled around her, she was enough. At night, she would snuggle under her covers, barely able to wait for the dreams that would take her to even greater places and set the stage for the next day. One morning, though, the sunlight felt sharp, stabbing at sleepy eyes. A little grumble escaped her mouth as she stumbled out of bed. She did dance that day, but not as joyfully, not as she had the day before. And that night, she punched at her pillow, waiting for sleep to take her away from the day. Away. Slowly, the people around her noted with pride that the little girl was growing up, learning to act mature, is what they called it. They were doing their jobs well. And so, the little girl became a big girl, nicely folding her hands in her lap as she sat very still, wondering why she felt so alone. There was still a part of her that felt like dancing and singing, but that wasn't acceptable most of the time. It might disturb someone. It might not be appropriate. It most certainly wasn't useful. So as the girl grew, she would lock the door of her room when the others left and sing and dance and visit the little girl inside, being careful to be a little quiet so she could hear if anyone returned. The girl grew and became even more dutiful. No one saw her dance. No one heard her sing. She memorized the answers others gave her for who she was. And soon, it seemed, even she forgot her little girl. To be sure, there were days when it looked as though the girl was happy, but the smiles were usually on the outside and not on the inside. Life went on for the girl, now a woman, and her life looked a lot like everyone else's. She was told that was success. Life, they said, is all about fitting in. Don't ask questions. It makes us all a little uncomfortable, and you don't want that. So the woman spent her days waking up and waiting to fall asleep. She wasn't aware the little girl was patiently waiting for her, reaching out in small ways every day and every night. But one morning, she felt a familiar tickle. The sunlight played on her face for a moment, and it made her smile. An energy she hadn't felt in some time lifted her out of bed. She sensed something familiar, and yet somehow it was new. 
That day was more ordinary than not, but from time to time she was filled with hope, which rose in waves and then disappeared into the ordinary. She went to bed that night happier than usual, but slightly confused at what the day had been about. The next day dawned and the woman again sent something familiar and exciting in the sunlight. In fact, she felt so alive in that moment she danced out of bed and down the hall silently so no one would hear her. Moments in the day found her quietly humming to herself, dancing in her dreams while she lived the life she thought she should. She went to bed that night, not as anxious to sleep, as anxious to be awake again. The months went on that way with joy dancing just below the surface of the woman. As the years went by, the woman became bolder, discovering things about herself she had somehow forgotten. She spent time every day hungrily uncovering pieces of a little girl from long ago. She decided that she could no longer only be the person others expected to see. She was that. She was so much more. She had always been so much more. She decided to share who she was with the world and with herself. There was magic to be remembered. And there was that urgent and now familiar rhythm that kept her dancing and looking for new songs to sing. Some people didn't really like that. They had come to depend on her the way she used to be. Now she made some of them uncomfortable, even angry. Are people really supposed to listen to their own rhythm and dance, they asked? Or should they march in the quiet lines laid out for them? It didn't matter to her. She didn't want it to tell anyone else what to do. The only thing that mattered to the woman was the voice of the little girl living inside her heart, whispering softly that she was indeed enough. She was magnificent. And she sparkled. I hope you enjoyed Story Hour Minions, and I hope you know that you sparkle too. And so do I. I love you. Be safe, be good, and remember, Auntie Heather loves you.